All right, team. Next, we will be transitioning from tab two to tab three to look at the most common example of a distribution waterfall. But before we dive into the Excel template, I wanted to explore the language behind the distribution waterfall. I often think this might be the reason people find it confusing, but now that we've provided a lot of context, I think it will appear simple. So the first step is 100% of all cash inflows to the LP until cumulative distributions equal the original capital invested. The second is 100% of all cash inflows to the LP until the LP has received a preferred return on the capital invested in step one. Third, a 20% catch up to the GP equivalent to 20% of the distributions realized in step one and two, plus the distributions realized in this step. And finally, the 80-20 split. And as before, the blue color indicates a distribution to the LP and green, a distribution to the GP. And this is the first catch up example we just explored. And now we're going to make a small change for the second example. The change in the second example comes in the third step. None of the other language here has changed. But whereas before, we had the catch up equivalent to all distributions realized in step one, two, and the third step, here it's only 20% of the distributions realized in step two plus the distributions realized in this step. So in our second example, the catch up is only 20% of steps two and three. Whereas in the first example, the catch up was equivalent to 20% of steps one, two, and three. To provide one more visual, let's go back to our catch up calculation. So whereas before we were dividing all distributions in step one and two by 80%, to calculate the value of all distributions realized in steps one, two, and three. In this third example, we will only be dividing the distributions made in step two by 80% to arrive at the value of the distributions made in steps two and three. And of course, you can see the ultimate impact of that is that the value of the catch up is much smaller. So back in the workbook, now we can go to the tab titled 20% after principal and 80-20. And on this tab, the only thing that has changed from the prior tab is the calculation for the catch up in cell D48. Whereas before we divided the entire first distribution of roughly $14.7 million by 80%. Now we are subtracting from that value, the original principal investment. So we have the value in cell D43 minus D35, which is the preferred return divided by 80%. And then we subtract the value of the preferred return, which leaves us only with the value of the catch up of roughly $1.2 million. And as we stated in our whiteboard example, what this does is drastically reduce the value of the second distribution. Here we see that the catch up on the previous tab worked out to approximately $3.7 million. And now in this new example, it's only roughly $1.2 million. Otherwise, the math on this worksheet mirrors the math on the prior worksheet. It's the only additional change. Now I want to leave you with a few things to think about. First, it's always important to check your math with these kinds of templates. Now this tab doesn't provide us the clean outcome that we had on the prior tab. You'll see below that next to grand total proceeds, roughly 13% went to the GP and 87% to the limited partners. But if you wanna check your math, recreate what is outlined in the document. So here, for example, you could take the value of your catch-up and divide it by the value of the preferred return. So subtract the principal invested plus the value of the catch up. Press enter and you should have 20%. And as a final item, let's take a quick look at why we include all of these min max functions. If the proceeds had been $15 million instead of $30 million, then you'll see that the waterfall falls short of the third distribution 
and that the second distribution is only equivalent to the proceeds remaining, because we don't have enough proceeds for the entire catch-up. This kind of flexibility allows you to play with a lot of different scenarios. If you input proceeds of 12 million, for example, we don't have sufficient proceeds for the catch-up at all. Running through these kinds of iterations can also help you check your work, which can be very valuable as waterfall schedules get more complex. All right, I hope that makes distribution waterfalls easier to build and understand. Thanks for watching.